God is good? All the time. And all the time? God is Just want to make sure you're, you're wide awake. Yes. I have a story for you. A long line of men stood at one of heaven's gates, waiting to be admitted. And there was a sign over the gate which read, For men who have been dominated by their wives while on earth. And the line extended as far as I could see. At another of heaven's gates, only one man was standing. And over this gate, there was a sign that read, For men who were not dominated by their wives. So Peter approached the lone man and asked, What are you doing here? And the man said, I don't really know. The wife told me to stand here. (laughs) Oh, well. Before this gospel uh, from Mark, brothers and sisters, we see the baptism of of Jesus as a kind of coronation, that Jesus is declared the beloved son of God. It's like he's the king of the universe. He was declared the son of God. Yet Jesus is not treated to a royal celebration or reception. Instead, Jesus is appointed by the spirit for a much different task, Uh, kind of a, a showdown, if you like, with Satan in the wilderness. The spirit drove Jesus out into the wilderness and he remained there for 40 days and was tempted by the devil and he was with wild beasts and the angels looked after him. Matthew, in Matthew's gospel, it details the three temptations of Jesus. But here in Mark's gospel, it just skips over them. The fact that Jesus was subjected to temptation was enough for Mark. The spirit drove Jesus out into the wilderness and who remained there for 40 days. So Jesus in the wilderness for 40 days, that's a long time. And these 40 days were not sort of a a random number just picked out of the sky. In Deuteronomy chapter eight, it says, Israel was in the wilderness after crossing the Red Sea for 40 years. And in Exodus chapter 34, Moses was on Mount Sinai for 40 days and 40 nights. So in each of these examples, the wilderness was the proving ground, if you like, the test of faithfulness, the promise of deliverance. And this is why Jesus is in the wilderness at the start of his ministry. And secondly, Jesus is tempted by Satan. The Bible presents Satan as a very real individual. Yet in our culture, many think of Jesus or or Satan as a sort of floating dark cloud or a personification of evil. Many think of Satan as nothing more than superstition and kind of fodder for scary movies and Halloween. But in the Bible, Satan is presented as an evil, personal, spiritual being who is very very real. And the name Satan means adversary or, if you like, enemy. And this spiritual being is the enemy of God, the enemy of good, the enemy of every person who attempts to submit to God. In Revelation chapter 12, Satan is called the devil, the deceiver of the whole world. The devil is not a mythological idea or a representation of evil. In 1 Peter chapter 5, it says, Be calm but vigilant, because your enemy, the devil, is prodding around like a roaring lion looking for someone to eat. Stand up to him, strong in faith. So what is betrayed for us is a conflict of two kingdoms and two rulers. Jesus, the king and ruler over heaven and earth, and Satan, the prince of darkness. In today's gospel, the battlefield is the wilderness. Jesus has come to destroy the rule and power of the devil. And the devil must stop this attempt and goes on the offensive against Jesus, God's anointed one. So Satan is real, the conflict is real. What hangs in the balance is our eternity, brothers and sisters. The tactics of Satan uses is primarily one of confusion. Throw confusion into marriage and the family throw confusion into human biology, throw confusion into the church, mix it up with sexual abuse of minors, then game on for Satan. So Jesus was tempted by Satan, and it says 
he was with the wild beasts and the angels looked after him. There's nothing very positive about being among wild beasts. It's dangerous. Yet Jesus is able to be among the wild beasts without harmful consequences. A little bit like Daniel in the lion's den. In Isaiah chapter 44, we read, The wild beasts will honor me, the jackals and the ostriches, for I give water in the wilderness, rivers in the desert, and drink to my chosen people, the people whom I form for myself, that they might declare my praise. So here again, Isaiah speaks of wilderness. The Lord will come and make a way through the wilderness. Wild beasts will honor the Lord, and give, him wa- give water to the thirsty. So once we are in the Lord, brothers and sisters, no harm shall come to us even if wild beasts are lurking nearby. And finally, we are told that Jesus was served by angels. And this confirms the success of Jesus in the wilderness against the temptations of Satan. The angels were serving Jesus in each one of those 40 days in the wilderness. The angels were serving Jesus. God was not only with Jesus at the end of the 40-day ordeal, but God the Father was with him every day throughout the whole ordeal. In fact, throughout the whole ordeal, Jesus is showing himself to be the beloved son whom the Father loves, and Jesus succeeds against Satan because he has come to destroy the works of the devil. So why did the Spirit drive the Son of God into the desert? Well, the simple answer is to save us from Satan. In Hebrews chapter 2, verses 16 to 18. For this reason, he had to be made like us, fully human in every way, in order that he might become a merciful and faithful high priest in service of God, and that he might make atonement for the sins of the people, Because he himself suffered and was tempted, he is able to help those who are being tempted. So brothers and sisters, if we are being tempted right now to complain or to break our Lenten promise or to take that drink or drug or visit that illicit website or go into the bookies or have an affair, go to Jesus first. He knows what it's like to be tempted. Jesus knows what it's like to be challenged. Jesus knows what it's like to be in the wilderness. He's been there. And it is in the wilderness, brothers and sisters, immediately after his baptism, that Jesus struggled. He grieved. He doubted. He suffered great temptations. It is a battlefield out there. But we must persevere and keep our gaze on Jesus. Amen? Keep our gaze on Jesus. To the people of Corinth, Paul said, We are pressed down on every side by troubles, but not crushed and broken. We are perplexed because we do do not know why things happen as they do. But we don't give up or quit. We are hunted down, but God never abandoned us. We get knocked down, but we get up again and keep going. That's from St. Paul, brothers and sisters. Great encouraging words. Each time we are able to meet the challenge of the wilderness, it helps to prepare us for the next challenge and the next challenge and the next challenge. And out of that struggle forms character. Character. It's precisely because Jesus stood against Satan and defeated him that we too can stand by the power of God against Satan and be victorious. That is why we have the prayers of deliverance at the beginning of this Mass. In the name of Jesus, I command you to leave. So here's a little exercise. Think of any area of weakness you may have. It could be greed, lust, jealousy, anger, drink, spreading gossip. I'll give you a moment to choose your weakness and your one big temptation. Now, Imagine the consequences that would occur if you were to yield to that temptation. Think of the list of people who would suffer if you chose that temptation. It's a useful exercise. Only if we act 
on the temptation, do we create negative, even devastating consequences for ourselves and others? I think it would be a great, a great to begin confession with the priest saying something like, give me one example when you did not yield to temptation. Well, I, I, offered, I was offered a drink and I said no because I was driving. Excellent. Or I switched off the laptop or I took a whole day off social media. Fantastic. Or I never give out to the husband or wife for one whole day. Hallelujah. <laughs> or oh, maybe just an hour. An hour. Right, right. Brothers and sisters, when we learn from Jesus today, what we learn from Jesus today is that we meet the challenge of the wilderness by meeting God each day. Remember, God was there each day with Jesus for them 40 days. Jesus was in contact with the Father every one of those 40 days. When you meet God each day in prayer and in scripture and in worship, you will hear God's voice in the wilderness, just like you do when you are on the mountain top. And that voice of God will prepare you for whatever temptations might arise when you find yourself in the wilderness the next time. So let that be our Lent this year. God is with us each day. May we intentionally be with God each day. And when we do, we will recognize temptation and resist it in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. Please stand.